It's Psalms 22. <laughs> All right. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why are you so far away when I groan for help? Every day I call to you, my God, but you do not answer. Every night I lift my voice, but I find no relief. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. Our ancestors trusted in you, and you rescued them. They cried out to you and were saved. They trusted in you and were never disgraced. But I am a worm and not a man. I am scorned and despised by all. Everyone who sees me mocks me. They sneer and shake their heads, saying, Is this the one who relies on the Lord? Then let the Lord save him. If the Lord loves him so much, let the Lord rescue him. So be it. also known as the Psalm of the Cross. David had no idea he was writing them words, those words, not them words. I sound like I'm from the South, sorry. <laughs> those words, those many years ago, um, you know, he was crying out like we do, why, Lord, why, Lord? But they described Jesus immensely, and if you go back and read it, you'll see more that describe, in fact, Jesus quoted those words. Let's start with prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you and praise you. You are a mighty, awesome, loving God, faithful and true, full and abounding of grace and mercy, that you would love such as mankind, that would reject you and scorn your name, continue to turn their back on your laws and the glory and honor that you deserve, and that you knew all along that it would cost you your one and only son's life, not just his life, but that he was mocked and disgraced and beat and spit upon and as Isaiah said, even beaten to the point where he didn't even resemble a man anymore. And we want to say, why, Lord? Why, Lord, of the things that happened to us? And we do scream out, why, Lord? Why, Lord, would you not come and rescue him? But we know why you didn't. You came because he carried our sin and our shame, and we thank you for that. And we also know that there is an empty tomb. So give us the boldness to proclaim the word of God with... with um, joy that is in our heart for the hope that is set upon uh, in front of us, Lord. May we fix our eyes upon Jesus until he returns. We just thank you and praise you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Light shining. Yeah, something we can count on every day, right? The sun's going to rise, even though it doesn't really rise. We rotate and everything, but we call it rise. <coughs> we count on that, the laws that God has put into motion and everything. You know, for three hours on the cross, it got dark. And don't be ignorant. Ignorant means you lack the knowledge of, so I'll tell you some of those things now. It wasn't an eclipse, okay? It wasn't anything like that. It was just supernatural. And it was the fact that the light was out for three hours while we contemplated who Jesus was, who Jesus is, who Jesus always will be. Because the cross makes it look like he's weak. The cross makes it look like darkness is going to overcome. The cross makes it look like there is death and finality. What does an empty tomb say? Wow. We're here till Easter Sunday. So I'll give you a few words and I'll tell you what my antonym to them is. Doubt. Belief. Fear. Peace. Despair. Hope. Lost, gain, death, life, darkness, light. You know, there's the S-U-N, and then there's the S-O-N. And we look so many times and say, all these material things, the sun will continue to shine. But there will come a day when the sun will not shine. And we got a glimpse of that on the cross. Because what if God didn't have his finger on us? What if he took that all away? Then there would be nothing good whatsoever. 
And then there is the Son, S-O-N, that is life and light to all mankind, even to those who are His enemies. It was while we were His enemies that Christ died for us. To take the penalty of our sin, to take our shame, to take God's wrath out upon Him. And what's here in the middle? A S-I-N-N-E-R, such as I. Sin separates us from God, but because He loves us so much, He gave His one and only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. I don't know how you feel right now. I don't know if you're happy or sad. I don't know if you're in pain or if you're free of pain. But what I do know is that every one of you will face death. Yeah, there might you might get back that the Lord comes, and I don't know what happens. And I think you'll die in fear and be re, you know, right at that time. I don't know. But death comes. And death looks like an end. It looks like darkness. But not to a Christian. Because a Christian has hope. Not hope that the sun will shine enough today and that we'll get to go outside and hunt each eggs. You know, that's hope. <laughs> but hope that gives us total peace that we know without a doubt whatsoever that God holds to His promises. We see all the fulfillment of Jesus Christ in His, in his birth and in His death and His resurrection, and He will return again to claim those that are His own. But He will separate the sheep from the goats. I'll read you Psalm 22 again from the New Living Translation, and I'm using the New Living Translation today. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why are you so far away from me when I groan for help? Every day I call to you, my God, but you do not answer. Every night I lift my voice, but I find no relief. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. Our ancestors trusted in you, and you rescued them. They cried out to you and, you, and were saved. They trusted in you, and they were never disgraced. But I am a worm, not a man. I am scorned and despised by all. Everyone who sees me mocks me. They sneer and shake their heads, saying... Is this the one who relies on God? Then let the Lord save him. If the Lord loves him so much, let the Lord rescue him. And that's what people thought about Jesus the day that he went to Calvary for you. If he is God, come down off of that cross. Come off that tree because he's, he's cursed. He took the, your curse upon himself. If you are God, the, the thief mocked, said, save yourself and save us too. If you are God, then He stayed on that tree so that He could take the penalty of sin from you and from I. And not only that, that the power of sin has no power in your life whatsoever, neither does death. So you're called to live a holy life, empowered by the Holy Spirit. You are the temple. You are the priest. You are the voice, the hands and feet of Jesus Christ to this world. I know that for a fact. And whether you believe it or not, it is a fact that Jesus Christ is the S-O-N of God. And His light will outshine the S-U-N as long as you let Him remove your S-I-N. I know that without a doubt, whether you realize it or not, He is light instead of darkness. But I want to talk a little bit about light and darkness because that's why we pondered that time on the cross and that's why He was sealed in the tomb and then there was a new day that dawned when the angel said, Do not be afraid, for He is risen. Darkness, that's a noun. To be darkened, that would be a verb. There's a Greek word for each. Darkness, the noun, is skatos. I'm looking again if I said it right, but we're pretty close. Okay? Because he's my, my Greek expert. Matthew 4, 12. This is after Jesus was tempted and began his public ministry. Jesus quotes from Deuteronomy 8, verse 3. Matthew 4, 12. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he left Judea and returned to Galilee. He went first to Nazareth, then he left and moved to Capernaum beside the Sea of Galilee in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali. This fulfilled what God had said through the prophet Isaiah. In the land of Zebulun of Naphtali, beside the sea, beyond the Jordan River, in Galilee, where so many Gentiles lived, the people who sat in darkness. Now, you know, you can sit here and say, wow, 
the, the, these words were quoted just like Isaiah did so many years ago, or you can say, wow, we sat in darkness, but now we're going to be exposed to light. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great life. The people that have s sat in skatos, and for those who lived in the land where death cast its shadow. Without Jesus Christ, there is no light. There is no life. A light has shined. From then on, Jesus began to preach. So if a light has shone, if the people see this, what, what were Jesus' first words in his public ministry? You know them. Repent of your sins. Change the way that you think about them. And turn to God. For the kingdom of heaven is near. What do you need to do? Repent of your S-I-N. And turn to the S-O-N. Because the S-U-N is not going to give you light for all eternity. But the Son of God will, the S-O-N. <clears throat> that same word is used several times. That's its first usage. But let me give you a few more examples. And when you read Scripture, think of the spiritual impact and also think of the physical that's there. Because so many times we just look at physical instead of seeing the spiritual. Everything that you see out there screams there is a God in heaven who loves you who is in control of everything, who gave you the things that you have because He desired you to have them. Whenever you eat, He desired for you to have food. When you taste it and your taste buds explode, He desired that for you. And how much more does He have in store for you for all eternity if you believe in the S-O-N? In Matthew 6, 23, your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, your body is filled with light. When your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light that you think you, it, that you have is actually darkness, then how deep that darkness is. In Matthew 8, 12, But many Israelites, those from the king, for, for whom the kingdom was repaired, will be thrown into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. At first you might think that is physical, but that is spiritual. They're going to be thrown into eternal darkness. Matthew 22, 13. But when the king came to meet the guests, he noticed a man who was, wasn't wearing the proper clothes for a wedding. Friend, he asked, How is it that you are here without wedding clothes? But the man had no reply. Then the king said to his aides, Bind his hands and feet and throw him into outer darkness, spiritual, where there are, will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is each time this noun is used. It's not used any other time in Matthew so far. Matthew 25 30 is the next time it's used. Then he ordered, take the money from this servant and give it to the one who has ten bags of silver. To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But for those who do nothing, even what, they, what little they have will be taken away. Now throw this useless servant into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Do you see a pattern? Wow. The darkness, that word is not used anywhere else in the Gospel of Matthew. And then you read the next time that Matthew uses it. At noon, Matthew 27, 45, darkness fell across the whole land until 3 o'clock. Do you think you ought to be thinking about the things that Jesus says and the outcome that your soul will see for all eternity if you do not realize that the S-O-N is the light of the world? There was no eclipse that day. The world was darkened so that they could think about the light being removed from them. Because it looked like Satan was going to win. It looked like he was going to snuff out the Son of God. <laughs> Little did he know that was God's plan all along, to kill his one and only begotten son, to take his wrath out upon him so that he wouldn't have to take it out on you. That's a wonderful story. And then to add that there's an empty grave, there is no body that anybody's ever discovered or anything else. He is risen, he lives, and he lives inside of you and through you. You have a mission. It says God was making his reconciliation through you. Mark and Luke record that same statement about it being dark for, for three hours. Let's look at how Luke uses it. The very first time he uses the words are when uh, Zechariah prophesies about his son, John the Baptist. And he's, you know, remember, his mouth was sealed up prior to that. Could you imagine if my mouth was sealed up, honey? I would get somewhere else. <laughs> 
But when he, his mouth is opened, he prophesies, and he says in Luke 176, And you, my little son, will be called the prophet of the Most High, because you will prepare the way for the Lord to make straight paths for God's people. You will tell his people how to find salvation through the forgiveness of their sins, because Jesus is going to die for your sins. Verse 78, Because of God's tender mercy, the morning light from heaven is about to break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide us to the path of peace, peace that surpasses all understanding. Luke also uses it. No one, in Luke eleven thirty three 3 through 36, no one lights a lamp and then hides it or puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where its light can be seen by all who enter the house. Your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when it is unhealthy, your body is filled with darkness. Make sure that the light that you think you have is not actually darkness. If you were filled with light with no dark corners, then your whole life will be radiant as though a floodlight were filling you full of light. Then in Luke, the next time we see it used, Luke 22, starting in verse 52, Then Jesus spoke to the leading priests, the captain, captains of the twelve guard, and the elders who ca had come for him. Am I some dangerous revolutionary? He asked, that you come with me with swords and clubs to arrest me? Why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there every day. But this is your moment, the moment when the power of darkness reigns. But that was temporary. Because Jesus said when he was on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. He also said it is finished, complete. Jesus' sacrifice made atonement for our sins. It paid the price. And we have been, been ransomed by his blood. It was sufficient. And the blood of the new covenant is not based on how we live. It's based on belief, our faith. But if you have faith, as James says, then you will live. Your deeds will show it. Let your light shine, if in fact you have light, so that the world sees your good deeds and glorifies your Father who is in heaven. So this darkness that was there was there until Jesus died. And the curtain was torn and light returned with Jesus' death. What we see as darkness closing in and death closing in on us is just our release into light. But you've got to believe it, you've got to live it, you've got to have faith. It is by grace you're saved through faith. It is a gift. Have you, have you received it? Let me remind you of some words that John wrote, and I said them this morning a little bit, at the uh, sunrise service. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made, and without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify about the light, so that through him everyone might believe. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. The true light who gives light to every man was coming into the world. Do you see light being said here? And what stamps out darkness? Light. Turn on a light, and if you can see it in slow motion, the darkness goes away as the light encroaches in, because light moves 186,000 feet per second. It conquers darkness. But the sun, S-U-N, will be extinguished. But the S-O-N will never, ever, he is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords, and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to his own, and his own didn't receive him. But to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of blood, nor of the desire or will of man, but born of God. And then you know in John chapter 3, Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night. 
because he doesn't want to be exposed. And they have this conversation about being born again, being born of the Spirit. And then we come very close to John 3.16, but I'm going to start in John 3.13. No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in Him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that everyone who believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Whoever believes in Him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. And this is the verdict. Oh, this word's coming up, this skatos. The light has come into the world, but men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever practices the truth comes into to the light so that it may be seen clearly that what he has done has been accomplished by God. That sealed tomb was a dark place. But as soon as that seal broke and that rock was rolled just a little bit, light flooded in. Light from the S-U-N. But if you want light to shine in your life now and forever, ever, ever more, then don't believe that the sun's going to rise tomorrow. Believe that the S-O-N died for your, son, your sins. Then you will be forgiven. You will be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And you will be God's one and only child. I told you there was a verb form, though, too. It's called skadidso. It means to darken or was darkened. Just like the sun was physically darkened that day. Romans 1.21. You don't find it there in the Gospels except for the sun being darkened that day. Romans 1.21 says, But God shows His anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. They know the truth about God because He has made it obvious to them. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and the sky, though everything God met, through everything God made, they can clearly see His invisible qualities, His eternal power, and His divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. Yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship Him as, as God or give Him thanks. And they began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. As a result, their minds became dark. And confused. Claiming to be wise, they instead became utter fools. And instead of worshiping the glorious ever living God, they worshiped idols made to look like mere people and birds and animals and reptiles. So God abandoned them to whatever shameful things their hearts desired. As a result, they did vile and degrading things with each other's bodies. They traded the truth of God for a lie. So they worshiped and served the things that God created instead of the Creator Himself, who is worthy of eternal praise. Amen. Next time the verb is used is Romans 11.10. It is the same today for a few of the people of Israel have remained faithful because of God's grace, His undeserved kindness in choosing them. And since it is through God's kindness, then it, it is not by their good works. For in that case, God's grace would not, would not be what it really is, free and undeserved. So this is the situation. Most of the people of Israel have not found the favor of God they are looking for so earnestly. A few have, the ones God has chosen, but the rest of the, the, rest of the, the hearts of the rest were hardened. As Scripture says, God has put them into a deep sleep. To this day He has shut their eyes so they do not see, and closed their ears so they do not hear. Likewise, David said, Let their bountiful table become a snare, a trap that makes them think all is well. Let their blessings cause them to stumble, and let them get what they deserve. Let their eyes go blind or be darkened, so they cannot see, and let their backs be bent forever. Did God's people stumble far beyond recovery? Of course not. They were disobedient, so God made salvation available to the Gentiles. But He wanted His own people to become jealous and claim it for themselves. 
Now, if the Gentiles were enriched because the people of Israel turned turn down God's offer of salvation, think how much greater a blessing the world will share when they finally accept it. And we have a mission to bring about the gospel as though God were reconciling men to people through us. The good news of Jesus Christ. Paul uses the verb again in Ephesians 4, starting in verse 17. With the Lord's authority I say this, Live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gave because they have the closed their minds and hardened their hearts against Him. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. But that isn't what you've learned about Christ. Since you've heard about Jesus, you've learned the truth that comes from Him. Throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. That's how those, the, verb, the noun and the verb are used in order in Scripture. Darkness as opposed to light. And the only way that you're going to have light is to believe in God's one and only Son, that He is who He says He is, and that you believe what He did on the cross was accepted by God for you. It paid your ransom. It doesn't matter even if a king were taken captive by someone else, a ransom would be paid to save him back. It doesn't matter if you're the best person on earth, the greatest person on earth. You will die in your sins unless you are ransomed back. And that darkness was there to make you think about what Jesus Christ was doing on the cross. The world sees it as foolishness. Scripture says that, and they do. How could God love you, let alone love His Son, and let that happen? It's the only thing He could do. No greater love does a man have than to lay down his life for his friends, Jesus said. If you believe, you are saved. But what I didn't tell you is that the verb is used in the Gospel of Luke also. It's the only place it's used in the Gospel. It's used in back-to-back -back verses. Luke 23, verse 44 and 45. By this time it was about noon, and skatos, darkness fell across the whole land until 3 o'clock. The light from the sun was darkened, skadizo. It's the only place in Scripture you'll find both. It's the only time you'll find the verb in the uh, Gospels. You think it's trying to say something? If you don't want the darkness to take over for all eternity, then believe in the S-O-N. See, we rely on the things that we have to bring us comfort. That, well, I know the sun will come up tomorrow. I have my health today. Whatever it is, all of that can be gone tomorrow, including the S-U-N. Scripture says that it will be. But the S-O-N is eternal, and He's offering you eternal life. Logan, do you have that picture of the cross? You show this to somebody and they're like, I don't get it. Why? That's what the criminals mocked that day. That's what the soldiers mocked that day. That's what the crowds mocked that day. If you are the Son of God, come down off of that cross. It wasn't something easy for Jesus. The night before, he sweated drops of blood. And he said, Father, if you can take this cup from me, take it. But not my will, but yours be done. And he did it for the love that he has for us. But the world will find the message of the cross foolishness. It's been 2,000 years too. You think Jesus is still coming back? I don't understand this. Luke 23, verse 35, I'm going to go back a little further so you can see it used there in its, in its proper tense. The crowd watched and the leader scoffed. He saved others, they said. Let him save himself if he really is God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers mocked him too. 
by offering him a drink of sour wine. They called out to him, If you are king of the Jews, save yourself. A sign was fastened above him with these words, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging beside him scoffed, So you're the Messiah, are you? Prove it by saving yourself and save us too while you're at it. But repentance came to one thief that day. But the other criminal protested, Don't you fear God? Even when He's sentencing you to die, we deserve to die for our crimes. But this man hasn't done anything wrong. Then He said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, I assure you today you will be with me in paradise. But this is so wrong. This is foolish. How could God do this for you? Because He loves you so much. The next verse says, By this time it was about noon, and Scotos, darkness, fell across the whole land until three o'clock. The light from the sun was darkened, Scotizo, and suddenly the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn down the middle. And at that point, verse 46 of Luke 23, Jesus shouted, Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands. And with those words, he breathed his last. If Jesus finished His work on the cross, which you'll find in a different gospel, and He said, Father, into Your hands I commit My Spirit when the curtain was torn into the Holy of Holies, giving You access as God's only child, and Jesus was rose on the third day, then You will raise to eternal life also. Don't let anyone ever make you doubt that. It's been 2,000 years. It may be 2,000 more years. It may be tomorrow. But Jesus Christ will return. And if you don't want to face eternal darkness, then you need to put your faith and trust in the Son of God. Darkness tried to hide what the cross was offering. It tried to cover it up. And it's our, our job <laughs> to tell people what the cross really is. Because they're going to find it foolish unless you live a life that brings glory and honor to God and tell them why it's not foolish. Period. It's your job. Write it upon the door frames of your house. Teach it to your children when you get up, when you go to work. Whenever the opportunity arises, tell them of the hope that you have in Christ Jesus. There's another picture I want to show you. Got it, Logan? Because when you explain this to them, they might just say, <laughs> I see the light. God gave His Son to pay the price for your sins, and light was not extinguished. It was offered to you forevermore. He is risen? Yeah, go tell the story. Psalm 22 is that scripture that, that Jesus quoted. In Mark 15, verse 33, at noon, Scotos fell across the whole land until 3 o'clock. Then at 3 o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? That's from Psalm 22. Jesus was abandoned by God so that you could be accepted by God forevermore. What greater story is that that you can tell? You tell people about your job. You tell people about the boat that you bought. You tell people about your grandkids. Tell them about what Jesus Christ has done for you. The ending of Psalm 22 is this way. You can go home and fill in the blanks. And you know what Psalm 23 says, right? So I'll read that first verse too. The ending of Psalm 22 says, Let the rich of the earth feast and worship. Bow before Him, all who are mortal, all whose lives will end in dust. Our children will also serve Him. Future generations will hear about the wonders of the Lord. His righteous acts will be told to those yet not born. They will hear about everything He does. The Lord is my shepherd. I have no need of anything. Is that the story your life is telling? Because if it is... I'll quote you Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the good news of Jesus Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes. The Jews first, and also the Gentiles. This good news tells us how God makes us right in His sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As scriptures say, it is through faith that a righteous person must, has life. 
In 1 Corinthians 1.18, Paul also writes, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but it is the power of God to those who are being saved. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen yes. Where is... I see Logan. Where's is she downstairs? She's down on the ground. <laughs> Kendall and Logan, you can say no, but would you like to help me with communion? All you got to do is hold the tray. It's not hard. Would you like to take part in it? Kendall? Okay. We're going to take communion. And they're going to help me. And that's why I went and got a second tray. And Sherry, you've got to get up. And we're going to come and take the elements. And then we're going to wait to partake in them until we all get them. And we'll stand and we'll take communion together. Because I'm going to put that in this so they match. Oh, my goodness. I told you the flowers had to be in the same place. The bowls have to match. I'm just a... It's who I am. Come on forward, guys. If you run out of juice, we have more. One of you get the juice and one of you get bread. Let the bread be on this side, Logan. Just so they do the body first. I'll pray and then you guys come up and then like I said, we will actually partake in them when everybody gets them. Father in heaven, we do thank you for Jesus. Lord, that despite our sin and shame, despite our stubbornness, our pride, our stiff-neckedness, Lord, not realizing who you are, the holiness that you deserve, not giving you the thanks that you need, you are faithful. Though we break your covenants over and over again, we know without a fact, without a doubt that you will not break your covenant that is written in the blood of Jesus Christ. So we thank you for his body that was given for us, and we thank you for his blood that was poured out for us. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, there is forgiveness of sin for whoever who believes. Lord, we do this in remembrance of Jesus, and we long for the day that he will return. We fix our eyes on him, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, may you sanctify us through and through. May your word, may you continue to teach us and reveal everything about Jesus so that we live a holy life. That, that brings you honor and glory. And Lord, give us the words and the, and the strength that we need to face this world and tell others about Jesus Christ every chance that we get. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.